Does animal agriculture increase extinction rates? Animal agriculture is definitely one of the greatest causes of biodiversity loss on our planet. Um, about 30% of the Earth's land surface is, is currently given over to livestock production. Additionally, livestock are one of the greatest causes of climate change. Uh, livestock produce more uh, greenhouse gases than all, all the cars, trains, buses, trucks, all forms of transportation in the world put together. So uh, climate change alone has been estimated by the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change to be likely to cause uh, the extinctions of one third of all animal species. On top of this, we have to add uh, all the animal species that are being uh, uh, threatened uh, and pushed towards extinction by the cutting down of, of forests and the clearing of native uh, bushlands to uh, grow feed crops, uh, to feed to livestock and to graze the livestock themselves. So there's no doubt that uh, livestock production is one of the greatest causes of uh, biodiversity loss on the planet. How does climate change affect coral reefs? Like most Australians, um, I grew up uh, on the coast. Uh, like most Australians, I love the sea. I spent many happy hours when I probably should have been studying during my high school exams, snorkeling and exploring uh, coral reefs, uh, seeing majestic stingrays, uh, scary sharks, uh, gorgeous coral and, and underwater seaweed and so on. Hence, I find it particularly tragic that coral reefs are being uh, destroyed worldwide. Uh, around 30% of all coral reefs have now been seriously damaged, unfortunately, by overfishing, pollution, invasive alien species such as the crown of thorns starfish, which eats coral polyps, and particularly by climate change. Slight temperature rises kill the fragile unicellular algae that reside within coral polyps and give them their colour. So as they're killed, uh, the coral go white, they become bleached, and we get the characteristic uh, bleached reefs uh, that are so notorious. Now it's been estimated by climate scientists that uh, keeping uh, global carbon dioxide levels at 350 parts per million would not be sufficient to prevent the catastrophic loss of coral reefs worldwide. Uh, as of time of this filming, uh, carbon dioxide levels are at 410 parts per million and rising and it's estimated that some 60% of all coral reefs will be lost by uh, 2030. So if you like coral reefs, please get out and see them soon because we may not have very long. Coral reefs are the most biodiverse of all marine ecosystems. They're home to an estimated one to three million fish species and a quarter of all fish species. And as with the uh, Amazon rainforest, it's particularly tragic, I think, when we lose these biodiversity hotspots. The Amazon rainforest is sometimes called the lungs of the earth because it's such a vast area, sucking so much carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, into the trees, into the plants, and replacing it with the oxygen that we all need to breathe. It's also, as with other rainforests, uh, the, the most uh, incredible location in terms of animal biodiversity. Accordingly, it's tragic, I think, that we've already lost 70% of previously forested Amazonian land, uh, which has been cleared uh, to create pastures, uh, for grazing animals such as cows, uh, very often to create hamburgers for American markets. A lot of the remaining Amazonian rainforest has also been cleared now to uh, grow feed crops to feed to livestock animals. How does animal agriculture affect climate change? So animal agriculture is definitely one of the greatest causes of climate change. And I think the top reasons are the clearing of large amounts of forests in order to grow feed crops to feed to livestock animals. On top of that, we've got the greenhouse gases, uh, particularly methane, which is produced by the fermentation of grasses uh, in the multi-chambered stomachs of ruminant animals such as cows and sheep. Uh, this is the source of around about 37% uh, of all methane uh, produced uh, by human activity. And methane itself is 72 times uh, more damaging to uh, the atmosphere than carbon dioxide is. Additionally, uh, a concentrated animal feeding operation, so a very large cattle feedlot, uh, as is increasingly used for the production of beef cattle, a concentrated animal feeding operation uh, tends to produce as much waste as a small to medium-sized human city. We consider the vast amounts of manure that the cows produce. But unfortunately, of course, there's no sewerage system to process all of this waste. Hence, you see it leaking into waterways and rivers, into the groundwater, 
and these vast uh, slurry lagoons that are produced release uh, nitrous oxide and other nitrogenous gases into the atmosphere. Uh, this is the source of around about 76% of all uh, nitrous oxide produced by human activity and nitrous oxide is an incredible uh, 296 times more damaging to the atmosphere than carbon dioxide is. So the livestock sector absolutely is uh, the source of many of the um, most serious greenhouse gases causing climate change and it's also the source of uh, much of the um, clearing of the forests which releases further carbon into the atmosphere and directly wipes out the species that are dependent on the forests. How much fresh water is used by the animal agricultural sector? So the agricultural sector is responsible for around about 70% of all freshwater consumption globally. Uh, compared to that, uh, the entire industrial sector is responsible for only about 22% and all domestic use comprises about 8% of freshwater consumption globally. Now most of that 70% of all freshwater consumption uh, actually goes into the livestock sector goes into growing the vast amount of feed crops that are required to feed the animals. And also for the animals themselves, uh, uh, high producing dairy cows these days consume uh, enormous amounts of water per head per day. Uh, so enormous amounts of our valuable fresh water are going into uh, the production of livestock animals. Why should we be worried about species extinctions? I think the loss, the wholesale loss of the other species is the greatest tragedy of our time and indeed of any time since the dinosaurs were eliminated some 65 million years ago which was the last mass extinction event. Now unfortunately uh, we are now living through what is the start of the sixth mass extinction event. Since uh, 1900 there would normally have been around about nine extinctions of vertebrate species. And so that's the, the birds, the mammals, the reptiles, amphibians and fish. Unfortunately though there have been actually been an additional 468 uh, extinctions of uh, these um, vertebrates since 1900. Now the rates of extinctions are somewhere between 10 and more than 100 times higher than what they would have historically been depending on the groups of animals. So clearly I think uh, that the, um, the loss of all of these animals is uh, literally the greatest tragedy of our, of our times. Uh, it's been estimated by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that climate change itself is likely to cause the loss of around a third of all animal species and the wholesale destruction of forests, the clearing of land to uh, grow feed crops, to, to feed to livestock animals and to graze the livestock themselves is likely to lift that figure up to above 50%. So this is certainly the greatest threat to life on Earth since uh, the destruction of the dinosaurs some 65 million years ago. And it's utterly tragic, I think, that we are so short-sighted that we seem to value uh, the cutting down of the forests, the short-term satisfaction of our taste buds for those of us who like to consume meat more than uh, all of the other amazing uh, creatures that inhabit the planet with us. So I think the most important thing that people can do personally to address this issue is to decrease their consumption of livestock products. There are a range of strategies that have been um, put forward to try to mitigate the impacts of the livestock sector, such as altering the diets of cows to try to result in less uh, production of methane from their stomachs, such as trying to uh, manipulate the manure that they produce to decrease the uh, release of nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. The trouble with these is even the best of these strategies is experimental, difficult to roll out on a wide scale, unaffordable and unavailable to much of the world and has the potential to reduce impacts by perhaps 25 uh, percent. Whereas the consumption of uh, milk and meat is currently expected to double by the turn of the, by the, the middle of the century. Accordingly, just to maintain the rate of destruction at its current level, we need to reduce the impact per unit of product by 50 percent. And the best of the technologies available don't have the potential to come anywhere close to that. So the only way that we can address this issue is actually to uh, achieve uh, widespread change in consumption patterns. What's happening at the moment is that things are going the wrong way. 
there are around about 3 billion people in the developing world who very understandably are seeking to emulate what they see as the affluent and desirable lifestyles of uh, wealthy nations. And uh, those lifestyles are associated with high consumption of animal products. So in, uh, <clears throat> in places like uh, North America, people consume on average about 800 kilograms of grain per person per year, uh, whereas in India they consume about 200 kilograms. And the reason is that in North America, most of the grain is consumed indirectly uh, in the form of uh, beef, uh, pork, milk and eggs and so on, because most of the energy is lost when you convert from plants into animals. How efficiently does animal farming provide food for people? The production of uh, animal products is an incredibly inefficient process. Uh, most of the plant protein that's fed to animals doesn't go into producing uh, edible protein for human beings. Most of it goes into uh, the production of bones, cartilage, uh, ligaments uh, to support the animal's metabolic processes, urine and faeces and the animal's daily activities. Only a small amount left uh, is left to actually be consumed as meat uh, by people later on. So with beef cattle it takes uh, up to 10 kilograms of plant protein and incredible amounts of fresh water to produce a single kilogram of uh, beef protein for human consumption. If we were serious about addressing uh, world food shortages, uh, we would not be wasting the food that we have by feeding it to livestock. We would be feeding it to uh, starving people directly. Does animal agriculture contribute to global hunger? In the mid-1990s, there were some 825 million people in the world suffering from hunger and malnutrition. You would have thought that with modern progress that number would have fallen. It hasn't fallen. We've now got more than a billion people suffering from hunger and malnutrition. Now we produce uh, all the food we need in Europe to feed the people in Europe, but not enough to feed Europe's livestock. So we're now getting the situation where uh, wealthy countries, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is another example, they've recently depleted their underground aquifer entirely. They need to import all of their corn from uh, developing countries where it's farmed. So we're getting a situation where wealthier countries are buying up vast amounts of land in developing nations, uh, surrounding those with fences and in some cases armed guards, to stop uh, the sometimes starving local people from getting access to the food that's being produced in these areas and then exporting it back to the wealthy countries. The increasing demand for livestock products is also increasing the demand for grain and raising the world prices, making it increasingly unaffordable to people in developing countries. The result is that hunger and malnutrition is actually increasing in the world, not decreasing. And this is a very substantial and profound injustice. So the overconsumption of livestock products leads to a very severe uh, social justice problem. Is this the most important issue of our time? I would say that uh, there has not been a more important issue for the planet, for all of us who live on the planet, uh, for the last 65 million years. Uh, we absolutely have the ability to change the course of this and to make a difference, and it completely depends upon people's willingness to uh, make a change. Now, this is an issue where uh, all the solutions seem to come together. If you want to improve your health, your longevity, your quality of life, if you care about the environment, if you care about animal welfare, then all of these issues intersect at one point. And that one point is to reduce consumption of animal products. Livestock production is one of the greatest causes of forest clearing and certainly one of the greatest causes of all greenhouse gases. So it's definitely one of the greatest threats to, uh, to all of life on Earth.